Hey guys, I'm gonna tell you how much money I made my first day, week, and month the small fly fishing YouTube channel. My name is Rosin and my channel is Rosin Fly Fishing. Super creative, I know. My channel is based in Canada. It's basically just a series of videos of me detailing my adventures and putting it on the internet. I always go fly fishing, I sometimes catch fish, but I, I very often post videos where I actually get skunked and I just edit them and post them anyway and try to make them interesting. I've been fishing and posting videos since the spring of 2020, but I really only started taking it seriously and kind of getting into the editing and video thing in the fall of 2020. My channel became monetized on July 29th, 2022. So just about two years after I started this whole YouTube process. I wanted to make this video to bring transparency to the process of being monetized with a small fishing YouTube channel. So for anyone who's sitting at two subscribers, 20 subscribers, 200 subscribers, or maybe you only need 20 more to reach a thousand, and they're wondering what their expectations could be or should be for their channel, I just thought sharing my experience and my data could be interesting for you. So I'm just gonna jump right in guys and tell you my numbers. Palmer, Palmer, calm down. Calm down, focus. So my numbers are gonna depend entirely on my channel and my video's performance. If you wanna get a sense for what CPM, RPM, click-through rate, video duration, how long my videos are, that leads to the numbers I'm about to tell you, stay toward the end of the video and we'll go more in depth in the analytics for my channel. But let's jump into it, guys. So today is August 27th, 2022. I've officially been monetized for four weeks, so 28 days. In my first day of being monetized, I made 73 cents Canadian. So that's less than 30% the price of a large coffee and less than 14% the price of a Frappuccino at Starbucks. In the first week of being monetized on YouTube, my channel made $10.36, which is about the cost of a spool of monofilament tippet, which is actually not that bad. And in the first month of being monetized on YouTube, my channel made $42.44. That's about half a tank of gas in British Columbia. Now that's not bad because my short-term goal with getting to a thousand subscribers, joining the YouTube Partner Program, getting monetized, was to be able to subsidize some of the gas costs associated with going fishing all the time, especially in a province where gas is really expensive. If those numbers stay consistent or improve, over the next 12 months, I'm estimated to make about $510, hopefully a little bit more. So now I have a question for you and maybe you can let me know in the comments. Is this in the ballpark of what you expected? Did you have any expectations? Did you think it would be higher or lower? Let me know, I'm curious. Because I don't think there's a ton of these videos out there. And I'm not sure that everyone has a really good idea of what to expect. Now I will tell you that for me, these numbers were actually pretty close to what I expected. I'm fortunate that I have a few good fishing friends that also do the YouTube channel thing and they kind of beat me to the punch um, to get their channels monetized. So they've shared their analytics with me and I knew by comparing the videos that they make and some of their analytics to what I do and the performance of my videos, um, I kind of knew what to expect for myself. But clearly based on the numbers I shared with you, I'm not quitting my day job, which I love anyway. I wouldn't do that anyway. But it's nice to make a little bit of money to help subsidize the cost of fly fishing as well as some other tax exemptions and fun stuff that you can do to save yourself money. Now, if that's all you came to this video for, you got what you came for, you want to go, totally fine, no problem, I get it, thanks for watching. But if you're curious what the performance of my videos and my channel is that led to these numbers, then stay with me, let's jump into my computer, into the analytics, and you can get a better idea of where these numbers come from. All right, let's go. Get the treats. Oh, hi, Kelly, you want treats? Good girls. Okay, get your bone. Okay, so I apologize if the audio here is not great. I'm on my gaming headset on my computer. I don't have a fancy microphone for this kind of recording, so bear with me. But this is my channel dashboard. Um, I'm recording a few days after I recorded the first portion of this video. So I have some additional analytics, a few more days of revenue, and it's it's just more days to average my numbers when we go in to look at some of these things like RPM and CPM. But you can see today I'm sitting at uh, 1,078 subscribers. Thanks everyone who's watching who happens to be a subscriber. That's cool. I appreciate it. You helped me get here, so thank you. You can see my most recent video here. I posted uh, just about four days ago. Um, it's doing quite poorly compared to my normal videos, but that's kind of been happening to me the last month or so. I don't read too much into it. This number here is good. But anyway, let's jump into the important analytics. So playback based CPM. CPM stands for cost per meal and meal is a thousand in French and that's just the terminology they use. So this is cost per 1000 views. This is basically how much money 
YouTube is getting from advertisers for 1,000 views on my channel. And there are a couple of things that factor into revenue per meal. This is how much money I get per 1,000 views on my channel. Um, a couple of things about RPM. So generally speaking, the YouTube creator takes 55% of every dollar that YouTube makes from an advertiser. However, if you do some simple math, $5 is less than 55% of this almost $13 CPM. The reason for that is because the RPM takes into account all playbacks, both monetized and non-monetized, while the CPM only takes into account monetizable playbacks. And so this number is very often less than 55% of your CPM. Um, you can see over the last 28 days, my revenue is 45.10. So it's gone up a little bit over the last four weeks in comparison to the very first 28 days. So I got $4 that day. This video gave me $2.53 in combination with the other views in that on that 24 hour period. That one gave me $1.96, this one gave me $1.81. So when you release videos, um, you can often get a, a nice little uptick and that's sometimes motivation for creators to put out videos. You can see over the last 28 days, my top earning content by video here. Um, videos are listed here, so this was about four weeks ago. That video in totals made me $6.53. Other videos have made me $3. And then I, I have some other videos that are older, like this one from Ambleside Beach last fall has made me $1.93 in the last 28 days. So these older videos um, play actually a huge role in contributing to your uh, weekly and monthly revenue stream. Okay, so these numbers, CPM, RPM, and my revenue, these are totally dependent on the performance of my videos. So it has everything to do with how long my videos are, how long viewers watch those videos, so let's go into the analytics in a little bit more detail. We'll click advanced mode here. We're gonna look at content and I want to look at view duration. So this is how long people are watching each of my videos. I'm gonna filter this to look at only videos. So I've set in my analytics the time frame to lifetime. And you can see over the lifetime of all of my videos, uh, my average watch time is 35.5%. So I think that's probably a little bit lower than a lot of people who make uh, really good videos where they're catching fish all the time. Because of all my skunk videos and me just kind of posting anyway and trying to make a good story, um, I'll take that 35.5%. I think that's not too bad. But my average view duration over the lifetime of all of my fishing videos is 3 minutes and 36 seconds. So that's not that long um, and that reflects the fact that you know, if you put these numbers together on average, total length of my videos is probably about 10 minutes um, with some ranging from eight to 13 to 15 minutes kind of thing. But yeah, these are basically the critical numbers that contribute overall to what my revenue is gonna be based on my RPM and CPM. Every one person who watches one of my videos, you know, they're only watching 35% of that video, which equates to about three and a half minutes. Um, so that's not that much time for YouTube to show ads at the beginning of the video and maybe one ad in that first three minutes and 30 seconds or some kind of banner ad or something else at the bottom. So one of the last analytics that I think is really important is impressions click-through rate. So basically how compelling your title and your thumbnail together are. So over the lifetime of all the videos that I produced on my channel, the click-through rate averages out to 6.6%. So of every 100 people that have had uh, the option to click on my video based on the title and thumbnail, um, almost 7% of those people have decided to click and watch that video. You can see that varies by video, obviously, and some are better than others. Some are up in the 10% range. Usually those numbers start higher and they go down over time. So if you put everything together, guys, if you have a good story, a good video that has a good title, an enticing title, an interesting thumbnail, without making anyone think about it, it just makes people want to click. And then after they click, if you can keep them watching that video for longer and then you have a longer video, all of those things combined are going to help you get more ad revenue from YouTube. And I mean, that's that that's really it. Like it's that simple. Um, you want people to watch the video and you want them to stay there and watch longer. 
and if they watch multiple videos in a row that's awesome that sends all the right signals to YouTube and then YouTube sends your video out to more people YouTube wants you to make good videos and they want to reward you for those good videos all right guys so that's it um, Thanks for watching this video. Um, if you have any further questions about my analytics, um, something you might be interested in and how it relates to some of the numbers we talked about today, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer you as soon as I can. I wish you guys all the best in growing your YouTube channels and remember, have fun, don't stress too much, and good luck fishing. Bye guys.